Good morning, all. Welcome to our weekly town hall. It's nice to see you. Um, before we get started here, I'd like to draw your attention to our annual, annual, <laughs> annual, before three years ago, our first live in person retreat in March, and hoping that you'll be able to join us. Um, we are waiting for Lama, and in the meantime, I will turn it over to Brother Pete, who's going to start us off with some chanting. Those of you who were here last week had a treat with him leading this, and today he'll be doing the tech. So if you have any questions for Lama, please put them in the chat to Pete, and uh, we will get started. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here. Hey guys, hello, can you hear me? <laughs> Full disclosure, I didn't know I was going to be asked to do this this morning, so <laughs> you show up to do the tech, next thing you know. <laughs> So we actually this weekend we uh, some of us were doing uh, a little retreat and Tara we were doing uh, focused on on the Tara mantra quite a bit. So. the structure of it now there's a little piece in there that's a little bit different than what we've done in the past i actually just kind of made this this weekend as we were doing the tower mantra so thanks for hearing it for the first time <laughs> and we'll do it one more time i think i don't know where llama's at uh om
Just wait and um, begin your breathing, just being, just sitting. So we know Lama Chano calling the Lama from afar. Lama Chano, Lama Chano.
guys all sing a little bit more, Lama will show up. <laughs> it's a little louder from all of you. <laughs> Lama Cheno, Lama Cheno, come see us, Lama. Lama Cheno, respond to us like your only child, Lama Cheno. in the dharma i love it no drama calling the llama as if from afar ah thanks pete brother pete of brooklyn love you good morning everybody Nice to see you on a beautiful Sunday morning. It is Sabbath, the day of rest, rest from our ordinary preoccupations, dare I say worldly preoccupations, from our ordinary quotidian day-to-day -day preoccupations, raising our gaze, turning our attention upward or inward, or just dropping everything and sensing directly, intuiting directly upstream of previous to thought and concept analysis and intellection. No one wins in the upcoming intellection, I assure you. Ah, oh, how sweet it is. Chanting Tara, that's Tara on my altar there, Tara statue, pointing opposite way. Uh, there it is. 
Tara and Golden Tara statue on the great stupa monument at the Bodhi tree in Bodh Gaya where Buddha sat. Gold covered, painted, gold leafed Tara. They gave me a message once that gave Atisha message to bring the attitude transforming Mahayana Lojung to Tibet a thousand years ago. That statue spoke to him. As they say, the great pundit of India, Atisha. Some say a bird was landed on Tara's knee and spoke to him, or Tara herself. It's hard to tell when it comes to the birds and the bees and the pundits and the magical dharma. Vast, profound, liberating, peacemaking, pure-hearted and delightful. A joyous dharma, not a dukkha dharma, not a mere pleasure or sukha dharma, but su dharma, liberating dharma, noble dharma, elevating dharma, as they say in Sanskrit, su dharma in Sanskrit, the elevating wisdom transforming teachings of the path of awakening, of enlightenment, of universal liberation, salvation, deliverance, whatever you call it, it's even more sweet than any words. These days, my friends and I have been thinking about Tara, the tutelary deity, the Yidam, the guardian goddess, the Yidam of America, of the Americas. Tara, first responder. Tara, quick answer to prayers. Tara, womb of enlightenment, mother of all the Buddhas. Tara, Dolma in Tibetan, liberator, liberatress, deliverer, however you want to translate it. The Yidam, the Ishta Devata, the indwelling deity, deity archetype of the new world. In Tibet, in Tibetan, in Tibet, called Tara, the guardian goddess of the of Tibet, of the inner high ground within us all, not just the foreign mountainous plateau country, the rooftop of the world, the land of the snows, as Tibet has often been called in poems and songs for thousands of years, but the high ground within, let's cleave to that, Devkut, as we say in Hebrew, cleaving to the high ground, to the divine life, to God and God's queendom or themdom, whatever we're going to call it today. I love it. So it's nice to see you all. And thanks again to Pete for raising the spirit, for invoking Lama Tara. With one L, Lama's a priest. With two L, Lama's a beast. But I happen to know that Tara Mama is the three L Lama. Little takeoff on Ogden Nash's limerick from the New Yorker 100 years ago. Yes, people have known about these things for centuries. And even now in the over-information era, we, have, we know so much, we understand so little. Information is not enough, is it, to bring us home. Thus we practice self-inquiry, cultivating insight, wisdom, spiritual realization, self-knowledge, as Socrates called it, know thyself, self-knowledge, not just selfish, narcissistic knowledge, always having to be a winner, even if think tournaments you're not in. <sighs> oh, it is a little embarrassing that orange is one of the Dharma colors, but what the heck? You can see it everywhere, the living spirit, the Buddha nature, and everyone and everything, even an agent orange, etc. Anyway, I diverge, I digress, I wander. Like Dante in his famous poem, I awoke in middle age and realized I was lo lost in a wood. My eyes were obscured by shadows and clouds, and I had lost my way. 
let that not be our regret toward the end of our life or on our deathbed. Found the way does not sound way better. The great way that cannot be codified, that cannot be weighed, the Tao, the flow, the flow that's going through us to you, even you, whoever you think you are or are not, the flow going through each of us, even you right now. No, Joe, you don't have to get into the flow. It's flowing through you right now. That's the message of Dzogchen, the natural great completeness, the innate great perfection, the swift and cozy direct portal to a wakefulness and the awakened enlightened life. Not just the mindful life, but this heartful, soulful, loveful life. Not empty, but the effulgent, overflowing void, the womb of all the Buddhas, the Mahashunyata, the space, the infinite. Fertility or creativity, everything rises from and dissolves back into, never separate, like bubbles. Never separate from the sea, yet seeming separate and countable and distinct. Bubbles are us, yes. I had some bubbly last night. No, not too much, but just enough celebrating the passing of one of my best friends, mother-in-law's Charlotte Cabot, age 97, peaceful in bed, surrounded by her family. May we all live so long and full and pass so peacefully. It's a good death, painless, struggleless, after a good life, and a relief to her and to everyone, not a tragedy. The tragedy is when things get out of order, and the youngers die before the elders. That's a tragedy. And there's so much tragic going on in the world right now. Still, boys, young men, whatever they are, often but not always of color, shot and killed in the streets, in their cars, at traffic stops not to mention wars in Ukraine. In the Middle East, Palestinians and Jews going at it again, as always, it seems. And elsewhere, it seems there are 40 fighting wars. That means with gunpowder involved, bullets, bombs, etc. Hot wars in this world, not just cold wars, partisan conflicts, inner conflicts and so on, but fighting wars in this world. Let's have a moment of silence, just taking that in, of solidarity with all those in the Ukraine, in the Middle East, in Ireland, South America, in China also, protesters being killed, jailed, disappeared. extinctifying species, the endangered environment, so much we could take in and dissolve into the vast expanse of infinite shunyata openness, the luminous void, and let it go. Non-attachment, friends, is the greatest form of dana paramita, noble, selfless generosity. Non-attachment, letting go, is the ultimate form of noble generosity the Bodhisattva's virtue of selfless, unattached giving. Self-giving, caritas, not just giving material. So let's give ourselves for a moment to the noble silence and include all beings everywhere. They are us, all beings everywhere in our hearts, prayers and practice, and open the heart, open the heart chakra, open the wings of the heart, as the Sufi calls it, and take flight in the space of love with the beloved the beloveds, however you conceive of it, the higher power, the inner power, including the powerless and the downtrodden. 
all beings, my body, Tara, all. Oops. The whole universe, my body, Tara, all beings, my heart and soul. Imaho. Imaho. Ah, I'm getting a message here to talk more about Tara. This town hall meditation is more for gathering, for sangha up, for enjoying the sweetness of contemplation, of co-meditation, of intermeditation, of interbeing together. There's a lot to say about Tara. You can read about it. Go online. You can see thousands of images of the infinite numbers of Taras, particularly the white Tara and the red Tara, the two main Taras, the 21 Taras, three times seven, three Kayas, seven points on the star mandala, the 21 Taras, the red Tara. How many know about the red Tara? In fact, the infinite Taras, infinite beings and infinite Taras for you mathematicians, two infinities, two sets totally interwoven into being, not separate, like ice and water. No beings set without Buddhas, no Buddhas without beings, like ice and water, same nature. Temporarily different states, as the Zen song says. This land is the pure land, the nirvana, this body, the very body of Buddha, the Manakaya Toku, as Haku and Zenji sang, great Zen master of Japan, called the national treasure in today's parlance in Japan. Isn't that interesting? Still venerating the wisest ones in their society. Where is that in our society, friends? I'm not sure that our politicians and leaders fulfill that role of wise spiritual elders. Anyway, I've been enjoying the noble silence. Let's continue. I'm going to ring the gong three times, chant a little, go into a little guideless meditation beyond mental calisthenics, letting go of effort, concepts, goals, directions, Relying more on being than doing on this Sabbath, this day of rest. Being with a capital B plus, not just getting a D for doing this in this school. This universe, city. Path of the cities, the cities. Sitting together. Sometimes I like to think about it as babysitting. Yes, I used to work. I was a babysitter too, as many of you may have been. Just watching over the nest with the fledgling flyers, the babies, the children without adult supervision temporarily. That's us. <laughs> oh, the pay is good for this kind of watching over, like Avalokiteshvar, Chen Rezi. The glancing eye, literally Chen Rezi, she who watches over us all. Great compassion and love. Homage to the Buddha in your seat. Don't overlook them. Ung Ujanyal Jinu Chasa Pema Gesa Dombola Yatsin Choking Udruni Pema Janeshi Sudra Line 5 Kordu Kandra Mapoko Kiki Jesu Dadruki 
Ching yu la chie shi su so, ngu du pe ma si du hong. Singing is believing. Ho ma hu men za gu du pe ma si du hong. Ho ma hu men za gu du pe ma si du hong. Ho ma hong. Oh, ma, oh, men za gur, pe ma se de hong. Oh, ma, oh, men za gur, pe ma se de hong. Oh, ma, oh, oh, ma, oh, men za gur, pe ma se de hong. Om Ah Manza Guru Padma Siddhi Hung Im Ho Om Ah Hung Om Ah Manza Guru Padma Siddhi Hung Om Ah Hung Om Ah Manza Guru Pai ma si, oops, muri, hung o ma ho, o ma ho, ben za, guru, pai ma si, di hung, guru, hung, lotus, hung, guru, lama ho, ah, hung, lama guru, mche, pai ma guru, pai, ben za, si, di, Om Ah Hum Om Ah Hum Ben Za Gur Pe Ma Si De Ho Om Ah Hum Ben Za Gur Pe Ma Si De Ho Om Ah Hum Om Ah Om Benza Nuru Pema Sideho Om Ah Om Benza Guru Pema Sideho May the Buddha's blessings ever awaken and illumine our minds. May the enlightened one's blessing and inspiration ever unfold in our good hearts. May the inconceivable blessing of awakefulness itself dispel the momentary illusion we've ever been separate, incomplete, or apart. And homage to the Buddha the Tara, the light, the divine, in your seat, don't overlook them. It's good, y'all. Yeah. Ah, yeah, very good. Excellent. Excelsior, as a movie star said, a Philadelphia Eagle fan, Excelsior. <laughs> Ah, uh, the soaring Garuda. You'll see it today on TV. That's the Eagles fans all over the country. Anyway, never mind. Soaring of spirit in the freedom of spacious, non-clinging and awareness alone. Awareness with a capital A plus going all the way in this report card. and beyond, swooping down from above with the bigger picture of the view, the ultimate perspective of Mahmudra, great perfection, while climbing up the spiritual path or mountain metaphor from below through relative practical practices according to one's capacity, interests, and aspirations, swooping while climbing. That's the great middle way of the non-dualistic awareness practice of Dzogchen, of Mahamudra, of non-dual, Vedanta, etc. 
nothing sectarian here. Open, lucid, luminous, aware, like sunlit space, not like an empty vacuum chamber. Like sunlit space, luminous, delightful, unbounded, roundless and boundless. Standing in voidness, leaning on nothing. Nothing's really something, ain't it? Oh, shooting out the fans. Just sitting, just breathing, just being present, aware. The three meditators, jewels, the triple refuge, the mom mover meditators, natural body, natural breath and energy, third natural mind, heart mind, not chanting, not visualizing, not praying or asking Santa Buddha for anything. Just being with a capital B plus as we already is. It's hard to be because we already are, so relax, don't even try. Just present, awakeful, not dozing at the wheel, having all kinds of so-called accidents through inattentiveness, through heedlessness, but mindful rather than mindless or heedless. Fully attentive, present and accountable with its many benefits. Even asleep in dreams, can be lucid, can be awake, can be aware, can be master rather than victim of circumstances and conditions. So how much more here and now, co-meditating together? One heart, one mind, one sangha, one beyond oneness or noneness, inconceivable, ineffable, yes, yes, yes. The three jewels of the positive Buddhism, the joyous Dharma, the lightening up while lightening up, lucid, luminous, clear, brilliantly attentive and awake, aware, present with a capital P, Rikpa, the mind. That's more mind. Open and aware, openness and awareness and separable. Sky gazing, space mingling, infinite dissolving. Letting go, letting be. That's the secret, friends. Letting go, not throwing away, pushing away, not suppressing. But letting go means letting things come and go. Letting be. Letting the gentle tides flow in and out, the tide of breath. The tide of heartbeat and metabolism, ah. tides of the ocean, of the solar system, the cosmos, of our biggest autonomic nervous system. Who's doing it? Not me. Maybe you are, but I doubt it. Letting go, letting come and go, letting be. Being aligned in harmony with the still axis at the center of the turning axle of the universal wheel, the universal mandala, the Kala Chakra wheel of infinite time and space and beyond. The Kala Chakra Tantra, the great interwovenness, interpenetratingness of all things, outer, inner, and beyond. The wheel of blissful, Awareness that turns day and night. Whoa. Way to go. Thank you. This breath, only breath, this moment, only moment. Whoa. Enjoy the joy of natural meditation, non meditation, unmeditation, undoing the habits of overdoing. Rest is sacred, as it says in the Upanishads of ancient India. Uh, dig it. Uh, take rest. Uh, naturalness. Natural flows, the way, the truth, and the light, the life. As it is said, enjoy the joy of being, joy of natural.
awareness, so-called meditation, pure, undiluted attention, nowness, awareness, nowness, awareness, the authentic, unfabricated Buddha within, Yamaha, way to go. Thank you. Oh. oh, how sweet it is. Oh. The big out breath, letting go. A little relinquishing, a little death with each out breath. Release, relax. And yet vividly present and attentive. Relaxed and dynamically aware. This breath, own breath, this moment, own moment, you know. Wake up, Doc. Buddha's looking for you, boy. <laughs> oh, you can hide, but you can't run anymore.
Don't be afraid to move. Don't be a wooden Buddha. Be a living Buddha, a dancing Buddha, a singing Buddha, a breathing Buddha, a loving Buddha, radiating Buddha, a protecting Buddha. So hum ta re tu ta re tri e so ha ha ta re tu ta re tri e so ha ha re tu ta re tri e so ha hum ta re tu so ha Om Tare Tu Tare Tri E So Ha 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 Tu Tare Tri E So Ha Om Tare Tu Tare Tri E So Ha Om Tare Tu Tare Tri E Yo 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 So Ah, ah, ah. Oh, Toddy, Tutti, Tutti, Soha. Ah, female Buddha, protect us. Show us the way. Purify us, purifying all, transform us, transforming all. Empower us to be clear and pure vessels of your liberating, compassionating Buddha activity in this benighted world. Thank you. 
Taro Imham. I love you all. Ah. Mm -hmm. It's always good to go out singing and praying. Oh, look, there's Kuan Yin, Avalokiteshvara. Have any of you who may live in the Midwest, like Nathan, Professor Nathan over there in Kansas City, which seems to have gotten lost and isn't even in Kansas, seen this great wood-carved 900-year-old statue in the Nelson Atkins Art Museum there in Kansas City. This wonderful icon of gentle, loving Kuan Yin, the most popular Buddhist goddess in Far East Asia. Kuan Yin, Avalokiteshvara, Chenrezig, Tara, so many names she has. A beautiful image. You can get it off the web if you like from the Nelson Atkins Art Museum or anywhere. We even have a replica of it in the MFA here in Boston, the Boston Fine Arts Museum, which has a great collection of Asian, Bar East Asian art, especially from the days of whaling and sailing and the Boston merchant mercantile business so many treasures including giant buddha statues in the museum and the buddha hall it's a good place to go meditate if you're in the neighborhood in the mfa in boston sometimes it's good to meet the buddha right in front of you like in this new book by a British author named Vasantra of the Triratna Sangha, the Friends of the Western Buddhist Order, where he describes all the eight great bodhisattvas and meeting the Buddhas and what it means, these archetypes embodying enlightened principles, not deities separate from our minds, not outside the laws of interdependent origination or interdependence as we call it today. The Buddhist meditational deities are archetypes like Tara, like Avalokiteshvara, or Kuan Yin, like Manjusri, the Wisdom Buddha, etc., like the Healing Buddha. So those with, who have ears to hear, see, meet the Buddha in everyone. Wherever you go, look into the light in their eyes. What animates them, not just light, wattage of the optic nerve but the inner spirit their ends their quote essence the living spirit the buddha nature as we call it in buddhism not foreign not foreign religions not partisan not sectarian not gender but the pure awakened illumined nature buddha nature Tathagata Garbha in Sanskrit, the word Buddha isn't even in there. It means sort of like isness or thusness or beingness with a capital B, not being a separate being, but being itself with a capital B. Pure presence with a capital P, Rigpa in Tibetan. Gnosis. I bow to that in your seat. Don't overlook it. Have a wonderful Sunday. Consider coming to our first residential in-person retreat, March 5th to 10th. We haven't had one in two or two and a half years because of COVID, et cetera. In Garrison, New York, in our old haunts, Garrison Institute that we rent. We used to rent two or three times a year on the banks of the mighty Hudson above Poughkeepsie above Westchester County, below Poughkeepsie, easy to get by train or car. March 5th to 10th, join us for Spring Awakening, so Chen Meditation Retreat. Love to one and all. Thank you.